All right, so today I am with Val Nelson, and we're going to be talking about how um, sensitives and introverts can be more fulfilled and um, on purpose successful in their business and their career. Val, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for doing this. Yeah. We did this once before, and it's fun to chat with you like this. Yes, yes. So let me share your bio just real, real briefly, and then we'll, we'll get into the conversation. So Val Nelson is a career and business coach for introverts with big hearts. She is an introvert and a highly sensitive person herself, and she has used those as strengths in creating and maintaining her full-time self-sustaining business for 11 years now. She enjoys helping others create what works for them as well. So um, Val, one of the things that um, you talk about that I think that's quite interesting is that our, our strengths are often invisible to us and especially our biggest strengths. So tell us more about that. Why are, why are our strengths not obvious to us, to most, to many of us anyway? Well, let me first answer. It's like knowing your strengths is a critical piece of knowing how to find your best flow and happiness and success in your business. So that's the background. But the problem is most people don't know what their strengths are, or they're so busy putting themselves down for certain things that they have lost sight of turning to their strengths instead of focusing on weaknesses. That's kind of an old school thing. Like, what are your weaknesses? They ask in interviews. It's crazy. <laughs> it's not even useful. Um, and often the thing we think is our biggest weakness is actually one of our strengths. So it's useful in that sense. It might be a clue for something to look for. And part of why, what I've discovered in myself and in my clients, and I see this over and over, we can't see our own strengths because it comes so easily to us that we think everyone can do it. We think it's silly. Like, of course, that, that means nothing. That's not valuable. Anyone can do that. So that's how it comes out. But it turns out, that thing we think is so easy is something we're just masterful at it, for reasons that, you know, maybe experience, it may be natural talent, probably some of each. And um, so we, we miss it. And often the thing that we're best at seems to be the one we miss the most. So I find it fascinating. It is. It's very interesting. Yes. Uh, it's obvious to us. It's natural. Um, so what's an idea, what's an example? I don't know if you want to give an example of from yourself or one of these strengths that you've noticed in clients um, to kind of help people to start spot those things within themselves. Hmm. Well, I'll just take, um, I'll take introversion because actually sure. that's a strength. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times people are so busy thinking, oh, that's, there's something wrong with that. And it's as the cultural yeah. messages. Right. Even if they've read about it, they've heard all the positive messaging about introversion, they still start saying negative things about it. Um, and they think, oh, I'm, you know, I just hate public speaking or I hate networking and I'm no good at those things. I'm not going to be good at self-employment. They come with all these assumptions that are actually myths. And it turns out um, introversion is a strength. I mean, it's really when you study what it is, it's about deep thinking uh, thinking before speaking. Um, often it means deep, we're good at deep listening. Um, if you think about it, those are really helpful. And, and I've just listed a few. There's really quite a few. Um, those are really helpful things for career and business. We really can, we're the people in the meeting that are like really paying attention to all that's going on. And we say, like when people finally give us room to talk, <laughs> we have a lot to say. And we've picked up on, you know, like we often have taken all those ideas and can synthesize them into something new that's fresh and unique. And that's what an entrepreneur needs to do is come up with something new and present it in new ways. So we, it's a strength. Yeah, that's really great. That's, and how, how can, how do you help clients discover their best strengths so that they can use it, uh, use it well in their work? Oh, I would say a, probably two things primarily that we do. Um, one is I have an uncanny ability. I can't help it. This is a strength I didn't know until I started working. I have an uncanny ability to see other people's strengths, <laughs> especially the ones they can't see. Like I can, I almost like my brain is sort of tuned to that channel. Like I keep asking questions until I find like their amazing strengths. And then I can help reflect it back to them and help them believe in it too. 
Um, so one is just the instrument of me that can kind of read and draw that out. But I also use some tools. I like the Gallup Strengths Finder tool. No tool is perfect. It's just kind of a beginning place to help us find some new words. I also like the Myers-Briggs type indicator, which is one of the main ways people know if they're an introvert, extrovert, or ambivert in the middle. Um, and it also has some other things that it looks at. So both of these can give us some words and begin to get us in the ballpark of, of what your unique superpowers are. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. So, um, you know, you focus on w the work area for, for clients' lives. And, um, you know, we've, many of us have grown up with this idea that to be valuable, work has to be really tough and difficult. Um, but you have a different way of thinking about that, like valuable work. Yeah. So uh, that's a perfect segue from the strengths conversation too, because this, the same, uh, ability, the inability to see our strengths leads to us minimizing our strengths, minimizing that. And we think, oh, I can't charge money for that. That's not something I should do my career around because it's too easy. That's not really valuable. So what happens is people start a business doing something that's a little harder for them instead of the thing that comes so easy because they think, well, that's the hard thing. That's what I can charge for. That's the real thing because we have this false idea that work has to be hard and I can't charge for things that are easy. It doesn't make sense. Our easiest thing, the thing that comes the most easily to us is the thing we're best at, the thing we're going to actually contribute the most value. Um, and it should feel flowing and easy. <laughs> it should feel fun. It should be joyful. That's when you know you're in that best place. Um, so it, I see it happen all the time with people in their career clarity process and in their process of trying to develop a business is this, um, they're having trouble aligning ease with, with actually charging for it. That's a really good point. Yeah. It's it, it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes so much sense now that you say it. Um, so how can we, if we can go a little bit more into this charging yeah. area, because that is, that's a sticking point for a lot of people, yeah. especially compassionate, heart-based people. Totally. This comes so easily to me. It feels bad for me to charge for it. So yeah. how do we... I see that there's something about the money thing and the pricing thing that I find so fascinating. And I love talking about it because yeah. it's about self-worth. It's about that inner, it's a really, it's an inner thing. And it's not about what will the market bear. That's like kind of an old school way of thinking about money, I think, pricing. Um, it's more about like, what do you feel? What feels right? Your instincts, your experience, you have a, you have a sense. But we, how I help people with pricing, for instance, if they're self-employed and they're trying to come up with their, you know, where they're going to charge for a month of services or something is to kind of do some guessing before looking at what other people are doing. Just kind of feel your way and then go a little more. <laughs> because we're naturally bringing in this not valuing. We have a little bit of that. So we have to go with a little more. And we also need to go step by step. If we can't believe in it, we can't sell it. So we have to try something, you know, like just, just offer it for free to test it and then try a little bit more and then try a little bit more and then see it, like I said, it's a very internal thing. You know you need to raise your prices when you get to a place of, wait a minute, they're getting a really good deal here. This isn't fair. <laughs> you want to have a sense of fair exchange. Everyone feels good when there's a fair exchange. Yes, yes, that's really. And um, so, so we've, we've talked about introversion. We've talked about how the strengths um, help us to contribute value. Uh, to our clients in our work. Now let's talk a little bit about marketing um, mm -hmm. because, well, how can people discover our work without us doing the, you know, being out there? Well, and of course, that's one of the things that introverts and sensitives don't necessarily love doing um, as a natural way of being. So tell us about that. I mean, <laughs> is there hope for sensitives and introverts? <laughs> in the yes. marketing realm in being able to, well, sell their services? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, I would actually not phrase it 
the way that I actually think we can be great at it and very natural at it, but there's uh, some myths about what it is. We think marketing is this kind of inauthentic or push kind of, or like really being out there, like how do I get myself out there more? Um, and I think it doesn't have to look like that. Uh, um, for instance, most of my business, besides word of mouth, comes from Google. And I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff to make sure that my website shows up in Google. So they're doing all the work for me, <laughs> you know, a lot of it. So, well, that is to me is an introvert dream is um, I put some things out between blogging and the information on my website and my listing in Google. And, you know, and I get reviews online. So I do have to do things like asking for reviews and take time to, to write and put that out there. But those are all introvert friendly methods, actually. So we just have to find our way. If we think that marketing looks like this certain thing that we think of as extrovert type things, then we're not looking big enough. We need to just maybe look over here. Oh, these are introvert friendly marketing methods. So that's what I help people do is find the way that works for them. Everybody's different. There's not like the introvert formula and the extrovert formula. There's what are your strengths? <laughs> do those things for your marketing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so really if you're good, good at writing, blogging and things like that are gonna be good. Right, yeah, makes sense, makes sense. And um, so the other thing about, um, you know, kind of building a business and, and, you know, success is a lot of times people have thought of it as a kind of a, oh, you got to pull yourself up by the bootstraps, you got to do it, you know, and, and if you're going to succeed, you're going to do it yourself. So this lone wolf idea is something that you, you talk about and how maybe there's a better way of doing it, a different way, way that could work and this is especially interesting because with as introverts you know introverts are more likely to want to well you know there's more energy spent when the, when we're with other people so it's like yeah. the lone wolf it might be a natural you know but talk about that part yeah thank you this is one of my favorite topics in fact i'll i'll back up and say i sort of think of four cornerstones of um um uh, clarifying and living your best use of you. One is your natural flow, like finding those strengths that come naturally to you. The second one is your true callings, like listening to your heart and knowing what it's really saying. The third one is co-creating. So I really believe that, um, that doing things by ourselves really don't, doesn't work. Um, it's either draining or it won't actually work, which either way, it doesn't work in the long run, right? If you get burned out. Um, and, you know, I, I've done, tried to do lots of things by myself, but when you really look at it, there's someone behind the scenes, you know, there's the bookkeeper, there's the person that helped me set up my website. You have a team, even if you're not realizing it <laughs> somewhere, there's no way you've done it all on your own, but actually noticing it and inviting it in more can help things go much more smoothly. Um, and it doesn't have to be that you have to hire a team. I'm a solopreneur. I have a virtual assistant. I have a web person, graphic design person. But I have a lot of colleagues that I spend time with. We, you know, look, we're doing this. This is a co-creation. Um, you know, Liesl, who's in your Master Heart group, she and I have done events together um, or video recordings and, and lots of other people. I even co-create with my clients. So I have some groups that I lead and I, I ask them, you know, like, hey, let's get together and talk about what we're going to do with the group. You know, like I'll have, you know, one person meet with me before the next meeting and plan it together. And they might do a piece so they get to highlight their strengths. So we're, and, and they love it. Like when I said, hey, let's start doing this. They're like, yes. <laughs> it wasn't like I had to talk them into it. They, it was like, people want to be included. They want to have more of a say. So co-creation can look at, it's like so many things. It could be a surveying your audience before you figure out what your messaging is going to be. Mm. You're, you're so good at that. You really, you like, you let people design the courses by asking them all kinds of things. <laughs> no, it's, I loved your, so I'm sorry, the, the pillars. Um, oh, kind of want to hear the fourth your, one? <laughs> yes. Yes. That'd be great. So natural flow, true callings, co-creating. And the fourth one is heart to heart connecting. So in other words, instead of calling it marketing and sales, I say all it is is connecting from your heart to theirs. You're just offering, inviting, serving. That's all it is. When you hear it switch to those words, suddenly 
lots of people who have big hearts, who really care about others, who, you know, are introverts, they tend to, uh, they tend to go, oh, I can do that. You know, it's suddenly really different than the feeling of the words marketing, networking, sales. Yeah, I like that. So heart to heart connecting is a pillar. And you have a, you have this in the shape of a, a, a graphic, right? Like a, a like a mandala yeah. um, that you kind of help your clients to, to work with. Do you, do you yeah. happen to have a picture of that? I don't, I didn't ask you in advance, but I thought, <laughs> or uh, is there somewhere I that shows? Show it, but it's, uh, you know, what's funny. It's so, <laughs> it's kind of, um, intricate and beautiful and we will get lost in this design okay we go there yeah. um, i did a whole workshop just helping to like walk people through this like you know step-by-step -step process it has eight parts in the shape of a circle or mandala with some with the four cornerstones that i just talked about and the order really matters um you know so knowing your strengths and your true callings before choosing your niche and your marketing methods and your prices so it's kind of great. walks you through. It's almost like a little game board. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's really through. cool. And um, do you have, so you have a kind of an online course where people can do that? I have it. I did it live and I still need to convert it to something that people okay. can do so later. It's coming up. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. So people should get on my email list if you're interested in sure. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a, do have a course that I'm hoping to launch in the fall. Um, that's going to be about like, how do you clarify, how do you choose your career? How do you find the best use of you? Especially now, mm -hmm. I mean, this is a crazy time. A lot of us need to switch, you know, what we're doing. So it feels really timely to be able to offer something accessible and more affordable in a course kind of way to help people find that clarity. The last thing I want to, uh, just briefly talk about is your your uh, perspective on perfectionism and kind of getting <laughs> it right the first time, which yeah. does keep a lot of us back. Um, oh my but gosh. what's your, yeah. Yeah, thank you for asking. So for some reason, actually, introverts are more prone to perfectionism. And I know mm -hmm. I've certainly got a big case of it myself. Um, and I think it has to do with how, the deep thinking that goes on in the brain that there's a lot more time for things for snags to come up and fears like oh my god but this and oh my god but that because we're connecting all the dots all in there <laughs> you know if we're taking that much time to think there's a lot more time for dots to connect and oh what are they gonna think and whatever so it's like I gotta get it right I gotta connect all the dots before I can show anybody and that's pretty much impossible <laughs> so we can really get stuck but it's not impossible I've I've gotten a lot of help from taking George's classes <laughs> um, to just go, just go with the imperfect, see what happens. And that's another version of co-creating actually. It's, you see what happens, you try it, you see what, what the response is and you tweak. It's an iterative ongoing thing. There's another reason I did it in the shape of a circle because it's ongoing. You're always revising, you're never done. So therefore it's never perfect and that's okay. So I've had, uh, luckily someone, when I first was starting my business, it was not going yet. And I was just interviewing lots of people like, how did you do this? And how can you help me? And do you need someone? <laughs> and this guy who had a successful business said to me, I must've said something like, I'm really having trouble moving forward or hitting publish or something. And he goes, look, perfectionism will kill your business. And I went, oh. <laughs> because I knew I was such a perfectionist and something about that kind of scared me into action. It was like, no, I'm determined to have this work. I am going to hit publish as fast as I can. And so that has helped me. And I feel like you, your courses have helped me with that too. Just hit publish, just see what happens. Keep going. Did yeah, that answer your question? Totally. It's great. It's great to hear your, your take on that. Yes. Um, all right. Well, you know, let's wrap up and I'm sure there are some who are, watching, listening, who are curious, well, how do clients work with you? Um, you know, we've already heard that you have some online courses, online experiences. And so, you know, if people want to go to your website and join the email list, they'll be able to hear about it. And also, it's probably nice to watch how you do your marketing, um, <laughs> you know, because then people can see how it can be done in a more um, sensitive way, in a more way that's, mm. that's a better fit for those of us who don't like the loud, more salesy ways of doing yeah. it. So I would encourage people to go That's check out true. your website and, and, and watch how you do your yeah. marketing. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, so, I do so, get a lot of positive feedback about the way I've written about uh -huh. my services on my website. They feel okay. like literally when they get on the phone with me, they often say, well, I just felt so understood already. Can we just start? Like <laughs> they, barely, they barely have any questions sometimes. It's, you know, cause I really do. I just go into a very empathetic place. Like what does it feel like the moment someone is looking for a career or business coach? They're probably really struggling. Let me just talk about that. So yeah, that's what it can be like. Um, and it feels good. I don't feel, I don't, I never say I hate marketing. I love putting words out there to support people. That's how I see it. Um, so yeah, valnelson.com. They can go there. They can sign up for my newsletter to find out about the next events. They can learn about um, individual and group coaching. And I do, I'm really committed to anti-racism and um, inclusion. And so I talk about some of that on my website. That's one of my biggest passions is um, social justice stuff. And so my clients are also really interested in impact, the social impact piece. And so we can get into it all. Nice, so. nice, wonderful. Val, thank you so much for the work that you do and uh, the way thank that you, you do it. Uh, thank and how you, that, you too, you've helped yeah. me a lot. Yeah, thanks for being being a, a light for for so many people. So, um, yeah, I hope you all will check out valnelson.com is the main link. Um, if there's any other links, I'm sure we'll include it below. Um, Val, you're also, of course, on Facebook. And where else can people find you online besides your website? Those are the main places I'm active. Cool. Um, but I do have an Instagram account, mostly just for fun. I don't use okay. it for marketing, really. Got it. You know, good. Keep it, keeping it simple. I love it. I do. <laughs> Plus, a I lot of people find you via Google, so that's. I'm good. very anti-overwhelm. <laughs> yeah. Go, oh, yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, wonderful. Um, great. Well, I hope you all will follow up with Val, and um, well, thank thanks you. again, Val, for being part of this interview. Thank you very much, George. <laughs>